Welcome back to the channel guys. It's time to change the oil on old Dolores here. So uh, I'm going to show you guys how to change the oil on a twin cam. This is a 2011 Electric Glide and 103. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is ride your bike. Take it out for 30 minutes or so. I know that can sometimes turn into like three days, <laughs> but go get it hot. The purpose behind that is if there is anything in there in the oil impurities or whatever, riding it will circulate it and it will suspend anything in the oil. So when you do drain it, it pulls all those impurities out. The second thing is it gets it hot and it helps flow better. So you actually get more oil out for the change. So go ride it. I know I don't have to convince you. The next thing you're going to want to do is drain the oil. And this is where some people get a little bit confused and then they decide I'm just going to take it to the dealer and I'll show you why. So roughly under your transmission is where you're going to want to drain the oil. Mine is covered in grime, as you can see, so I'm probably going to end up cleaning that. Let me get this light set up so I can do this with one hand. What you don't want to do is remove this plug. That's just a casting plug. You'll get a little bit of oil out of it, not much, a couple drips. Dad, I'm looking at you. <laughs> don't remove this. Here is your engine oil drain. It's an external hex plug, so that's the difference between the two. Farther over here is going to be your transmission drain. I don't know if you can see that up there. It's similar to your oil drain, but it's, uh, it's vertical where your oil is going to be horizontally mounted. This is looking towards the back of the bike. This, is, this way is front. <laughs> the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull this plug and drain the oil out after we put our oil pan underneath. All right, see how it's, it's kind of dribbling out? So once I get that draining, then I'll loosen this, which is where you put your oil in. And you can see that's flowing a lot better now. The reason I drain it first and then open the oil fill cap is because when you pull that plug out, there's not air rushing in to displace the oil. So then it may or may not run on your hand quite as bad. It's just kind of a little uh, thing I got used to doing. So it works pretty well if you do it that way. If you loosen the cap first and then drain the oil, it just comes rushing out and gets all over your hand. And with it being hot, that kind of sucks. So then once you dig your uh, oil plug out of your uh, oil pan, you want to check this magnet here at the end and make sure there's not a bunch of metal shavings on it because That'll kind of give you a telltale sign if there's something going on in the motor. If there's a bunch of shavings there, that's bad. So you don't want that. There's also an O-ring on here. It's just a standard rubber O-ring and these do wear out. So if your Harley's dripping oil, if your newer Harley is dripping oil, it's usually that O-ring. I'm actually gonna replace mine with a Viton O-ring. These are reusable. I think you're supposed to change them every oil change or whatever, but you can reuse them. This one's probably got 20,000 miles on it. Since it's getting a little older, I got some Viton O-rings and those are a little more heat resistant O-rings. So it should last pretty much forever. So here's the Viton O-ring. If you guys are curious what size it is, it's a 013. And then before I put the plug back in, I always clean up the surface of where the O-ring seals. That way you get a good seal around the O-ring. One thing that I've always found kind of annoying when you're trying to learn something from the internet is you never can find torque specs anywhere. I mean, you can, but you gotta dig a little bit. So I have my service manual page and the oil drain plug you tighten to 14 to 21 foot pounds. So there you have it. If you're like me and you don't have a torque wrench that goes that low, just snug it up. It's sealing on the O-ring itself, not the threads. So it doesn't need to be He-Man tight. Just get it good and snug and you should be good to go. All right, your next step is to take your oil filter off. You don't need the special Harley oil filter wrench. And I'm gonna show you a little tip that I did quite a few years ago, actually. All right, so I went and bought one of the plastic oil filter wrenches. Uh, I believe it's a size D. All you have to do is take a Dremel and cut out about two of the hexes 
and then file. Let's see if I can get this to focus. File the edge down right here. Just like that. So what that allows you to do, here's your oil filter. Sits right in front of the front cylinder. You can see right here is the crankshaft sensor. So what this filter wrench allows you to do is it allows you to put that filter wrench on there while avoiding that crankshaft sensor. So as you can see, if you don't cut that filter wrench down, it'll hit that. It'll hit that sensor and you won't be able to get it off. So just cut it down and then you can put it on there. And the reason I cut that flange is so it fits way back in there. So when I turn this, I just kind of watch that sensor to make sure I'm not going to hit it. So you can turn it while it's on there. I don't know if you can see it. It's starting to get pretty close to that sensor. I usually just go one full revolution until it gets there and then I can pull the filter wrench off. Then theoretically it should be loose enough to just turn by hand. As long as the guy that put it on originally didn't overdo it. Also hot as balls. I'll usually take a lint free towel and just clean that shiny surface up so the new filter will seat to it really well. As far as uh, your oil and your filter, just use whatever you want to use. I don't, I don't really have a preference except for, I always use Wix filters. Back when I was racing cars, that was kind of the, the filter to use. That was in the uh, early 2000s and, and as far as construction, the Wix seemed like it was one of the better ones. Uh, there wasn't as many problems, so that's why I use Wix and it's just a habit, I guess. Technically, you're supposed to put a little bit of oil in the filter before you put it on. That way there's not a pocket of air in the oil. So, you know, when the oil pump turns, it sucks air or whatever. I'm going to put a little bit in, but I don't like to fill them up too full because you, you have to turn the filter like this to put it on. So if you get it too full, I mean, that media is going to absorb some of it. But if you get it too full, you're just going to run oil out of it. And uh, so just a little, in my opinion, just a little bit is, is good. Maybe half full. Unfortunately, I can't hold the camera and pour oil into my filter, so you're just going to take my word for it. It got a little messy, but while this oil's here, take a little bit of fresh oil and just coat that O-ring. And that'll help give you, you don't need, it just needs a thin coat. And that'll help give you a good seal on your surface. If you're new to changing oil in general, you just want to spin this by hand until the O-ring seats, until it hits and then you want to turn it like three quarters to a full turn. It's usually like as hard as I can get it with my, just my hands. I don't never want to put a wrench to tighten a filter. So just put your hands on it and tighten it at least three quarter and you should be good to go. You can cheat by putting a towel on it. If your hands are slipping on oil or whatever, a towel will give you a little extra grip and that'll do it for the filter. It's done. Now all we have to do is put oil in the bike. All right, we're back to the right side of the bike. Drain plug is in. Don't forget the drain plug. I did that on the old ladies Jeep once, made a mess. <laughs> oil filters on, got a little oil in there. Mounting surfaces were clean. We're good to go there. The only thing we have left is to put oil in the bike. So on the right side of the bike, which is your air filter side, right here under your seat, is your dipstick and that's where you fill it. I always set this on a clean towel. This one's clean other than just a little oil. And I have one of these funnels and it works great for this because it's long enough to get up there and it's got like a little cup. If you want one of these, I'll try to find it on Amazon and post a link in the description of this video. It kind of makes it idiot proof. If you have a service manual and you look at it, it says to initially put in three and a half quarts and then check from there with your dipstick. 
you do a cold check first and then you ride it around, get it hot and then do a hot check to just verify your levels. In my experience with this motor, I've always had four quarts exactly in it. Uh, but for this demonstration, I'm going to do the three and a half quarts and then I'll just do a cold check and see where we're at and probably end up having to put that last half quart in. I like to overpay for oil. I've been using the Sin 3 ever since the spike was new. That's going to get a different oil in it whenever I decide on an oil. I know that's a huge topic, but uh, let's be honest, guys. Any brand name oil is probably going to be fine as long as it's made for your air-cooled V-Twin. No need to start any arguments about oil in the comments, although if you want to, be my guest. Just be civil to each other. These come one US gallon, which is four quarts. So we should use all but half a quart of this. There's markings on the side to give you an idea. We're going to do this one handed just so you can get the visual fun. So I'm probably going to, oh yeah, spilled it all over hell. <laughs> Seriously, if you guys have never worked on your bike with, with a camera, it's not a good time. But, uh, I do it for you. We, we, content, YouTube content creators, do it for you guys. Okay, I clean that up. I'm gonna see if I can spill some more. If you put this on its side like that, it flows a little better. The air gets in there a little easier. This is about the point where if you forget the drain plug, you'll start seeing it run out onto your knees. And then you say some cuss words and Go buy more oil. And... All right, oil check. You can see we've just used just a little over two quarts. So we keep on keeping on. I don't know if you can see that. We're sitting right about three and a half quarts. So if you look at your dipstick, you can see this is full hot on Jiffy Stand, which is just a fancy word for your kickstand. <laughs> and, uh, this is full hot with the vehicle upright. So when, when the engine's hot, if you're, if you're on the kickstand, this is your full mark. If it's standing upright, like if you're on a motorcycle jack or something, you're going to go off this one, just from the tilt of the bike. Screw it all the way in so you get an accurate reading. Now keep in mind, the oil is cold. The engine's hot, but the oil is cold. It takes a while to heat that up. So, as you can see, it's over full, but that filter's halfway empty. So if you remember, we only put just a little bit of oil in that filter when we screwed it on. Those filters hold a lot of oil, probably half a quart. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start the bike, get the oil circulating, then we'll shut it back off, let it kind of settle a little bit, and then we'll check it and see where we're at as far as levels go. I should also mention that after you start the bike, that's a good time to check for leaks. Make sure your oil filter's tight, make sure your drain, drain plug is tight, and everything's good there. If it's going to leak, that's when it's going to do it. You can be aware of it right away, get it shut down, whatever you got to do. All right, I ran the bike for about 60 seconds, let it cool off for probably five minutes just to kind of let everything settle back into the reservoir. So we'll pull the dipstick out and check it again. Wipe it off a little bit. Then go back in and pull it out. Well, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it is right at the full line on the Jiffy stand at three and a half quarts. So I made a liar out of myself when I said I usually get four quarts. Maybe I was thinking of something else, but regardless, the level is good. Usually what I do is I'll ride it around for a few days and then just check it again. Just to make sure the filter's full, everything's circulated well. Idling in the garage isn't always the best way to get everything circulated. So, uh, and you can't, you definitely can't idle it very long because it'll get too hot. But I'll ride it around for a few days. I'll ride it to work a couple of days this week and check it. I'm guessing it probably won't change much because now that I think about it, I think I have another half a quart <laughs> in the other garage from the last time I did an oil change, but whatever. It, it, I guess next time I'll just buy three quarts and I'll be good to go. But anyway, guys, that's pretty much it. Um, that's pretty much the only thing you gotta do to change the oil. It's super easy, get a little dirty doing it, but you know, it's fun to hang out in the garage once in a while. So uh, hopefully if you're new, if you've never done this before, you learned a little bit, 
If you're more experienced than me and you know some more tips other than the few that I gave you, post them up in the comments. I'd love to hear them. All right, guys. Until next time. See ya.